morning. One of my very favorite YouTubers has just put out a video and I don't watch this YouTuber only for his beautiful beautiful voice and accent which is to die for just in my opinion um, but I, I genuinely adore and respect this person because he's not only intelligent, compassionate, wise, he's direct and he's, he's very clear about what he's trying to teach you and tell you and he has made a very long series of videos about the Delphi murders Abigail Williams and Liberty German, who were murdered four years ago. And if you already watch, have watched me for a little while, you're probably very aware of this person. You're probably a sub to his YouTube channel, but it's John Kelly Profiler. And John Kelly made this video today about the Delphi murders, talking about Leah Kerr. And the information that Leah Kerr, maybe Leica, um, has delivered on a Facebook page, a Delphi Murders Facebook page, recently. And John Kelly is basically stating, I think, that, look, let's look at this as if this were not a hoax because this can save lives. True Crime Jesus is one channel that's put out um, a video about this, Leah Kerr and the statements they made. And you can go over to True Crime Jesus channel and just see that there's a revelation at the end of that video. And that revelation might explain why Tobe Leesonby, Sheriff Leesonby, was looked at initially at the start of the investigation. And let's be clear, Tobe Leesonby... Um, has been cleared not just by oh someone coming up and being a witness word of mouth witness or what have you but by physical evidence okay so let's be clear on that yes i have thought oh that's weird you know tobe kind of looks like the person on the bridge um but you know we know we've been discussing did bridge guy act as someone in authority law enforcement etc well, go and listen to True Crime Jesus for what is said about that. And please, go to John Kelly Profiler and listen to John Kelly and how he talks about um, this moving forward. And if you're living in America and around the Indiana era, area, please share John Kelly's video with everybody that you know, uh, if you don't do that already. Uh, because some of the things that, I mean, there's been these rumours around for a long time with some of what Leah Kerr is saying about how the girls were found, you know, staging, etc., method of murder and the like. But the way John, if you haven't watched John Kelly, the way that he's building up through the facts as they come to light and the way he talks about this filthy, poor excuse of a human being, the Delphi murderer, uh, he gives you a really good understanding of what you really need to look for in your real life if you are around the area or if you, uh, you know, or for, to look for in someone like this okay and how they might act in life what may have brought them to the stage in life to the place where they are driven to act out why they might be acting out and doing the things they do and this can help catch this killer if law enforcement have any idea at all they need they do need a witness it seems, because they haven't made an arrest. So they need some sort of statement from somebody to say, 
well, this person lied about where they were maybe, or I know this person was in the area. He acts this way. I know he has these certain fantasies and he's hurt me in this particular way before, or I don't know, whatever it is. But this person has to be stopped because if he hasn't killed in the interim, he may still do this. He may lose his fear of being caught as time goes on. He may just move to an entirely another area and then one day in the news we will see a murder that ticks these same boxes as this Delphi murder. And how devastating is that going to be? You know, if what Leah Kerr says is true, I mean, these girls were terrified and humiliated in life and humiliated in death and someone with this much hate and maybe self hate and just so much anger and darkness inside them that they can't hold this in forever because their damage is so severe and great it's not going to be you know this may have been a, a, a you know, a release valve of some pressure that's lasted for a short amount of time, but it's it's got to be building up. And perhaps they're frightened to perpetrate around the same county or state, but perhaps if they have the opportunity to go somewhere else, you know, vulnerable people, you know, to kill complete strangers as an opportunistic crime. I mean, this is a dangerous, dangerous person. Um, that And it means that anybody can be at risk. You know, we have to accept that these opportunistic people are in the world walking shoulder to shoulder with us in life. Perhaps just people that we meet in our community, but maybe acquaintances, perhaps family members, perhaps people we share our homes with. And we also have to accept too, you see, we have to accept it doesn't have to be anything you've done. It doesn't have to be anything in your life that makes you a victim. You know, you don't have to have a husband that just wants to get rid of you, you know, we need to accept that opportunistic people exist, that random events happen to you. I mean, this is scary. Yes, we like to think that maybe we've got some sort of control over our destiny. Well, if we have positive relationships, if we're in loving relationships, if we communicate well, if we manage our lives in a certain way, well, we're not going to be victims like Suzanne Morphew, for example. It's hard for people to accept that Barry Morphew, for example, could well be very innocent and is just as much a victim. He has lost his wife and his life, you know, um, and that an opportunistic asshole killer has just taken and murdered Suzanne Morphew. Why is this difficult for people to put into their list of um, possibilities when they're thinking about this crime, you know. Um, Suzanne Morphew's been missing for 10 months. Uh, there are people just wandering around that will snatch a woman or go into a home and take a woman. Um, so, yes, Barry Morphew may have premeditated a crime. Suzanne Morphew could have actually been murdered well before the um, Mother's Day last year. Sure, yes. But it, it's not necessarily the case. And we should know this by the crimes that we see happening everywhere, okay? Um, people aren't safe, not only from just people in their lives, but from strangers. This is still very 
true. Um, you know, I, I really believe Suzanne Morphew loved her life in the mountains. I really do. I, I don't understand why people think that Barry has just stolen her away from Indiana, um, away from family and friends and, and all that she knew. I mean, I think at, at someone's stage of life, at, you know, nearly 50 years old and surviving cancer, I think going to live in a beautiful mountain area and a beautiful mountain town where your daughter or daughters can go to university, where you can, uh, you know, live a beautiful, fresh, clean life. Why not? And I think they wholly intended on living at Longhorn Ranch together. Um, you know, selling Puma Path home doesn't shock me at all. People think it's suspicious. Yes, possibly it is, but I, I, I'm not sure. Selling Longhorn Ranch to me just sounds sad. Um, that sounds sad because that's the death of a dream for Barry Morphew and the girls too. Imagine having a beautiful retirement, early retirement or semi-retirement in a gorgeous town like Salida. I mean, probably the same as mountain villages or seaside villages here in Australia, you know, in the Blue Mountains or along that um, Sapphire Coast, for example. People retire to these beautiful hamlets and towns and they, they live beautiful lives in, in areas with natural beauty and with, away from cities where you just, you've got all sorts of ugly things shoved in your face, you know, and I don't understand why people find it difficult to believe that someone wanted that life. Um, they say, oh, it's Barry's hunting lodge. It's so masculine. I thought that home was beautiful. I thought it was made um, and designed perfectly for the environment. They say there's no windows. I mean, they're, they're, the great room had wall to ceiling windows just built within timber frames. Um, I think it was a beautiful home. But yeah, it was also a great investment um, to have to sell it. Yeah, so yes, okay, we know, we know the, tr the, the statistics. Um, you know, Barry Morphe, you may be guilty, but <laughs> it's not necessarily the case. And... There's so many other crimes that, you know, I think prove a point more closely to the husband being guilty. Um, Larry Maletti, well, isn't he just, I don't know, what a kettle of fish. I think he's not the brightest tool in the block, to be honest, and uh, he can't stop talking. You talk about Barry Morphew not talking, well, he's he's possibly frightened of how every word will be judged by us, you, okay? Uh, Larry Maletti, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be able to stop. And I hope this is his downfall if he is guilty. Um, I mean, I have no idea how to judge whether he's guilty or innocent. I'm a member of the public, an MOP. Uh, you know, but if I was to go on vibe... I feel like um, this man wasn't letting this woman, Maya, Maya, Maya means transformation. It translates to transformation. Um, a lot of um, transsexuals will choose the name Maya for that meaning. And it's, it's a beautiful name. Maya Maletti, you know, here's Larry just saying, okay, well, we were still in the same home, but we were separating. Okay, yeah, we're having trouble in our marriage. But, you know, Maya wanted a, a divorce by other people's accounts that should know her family. And this happens a lot in today's society where people who have separated have to share homes for a while. So they're still living, trying to live separate lives. And if, you know, one partner doesn't want the separation as much as the other or if at all they're not going to like the other partner living a life that involves a social life and maybe a 
romantic social life, are they? Under their nose, it's going to hurt. Um, you know, unless the two both want the divorce, are both just being pragmatic, uh, amicable, sharing space, let's just be respectful of each other um, to do with new relationships, you know. But Larry doesn't seem like that type of person, does he? It seems like he uh, didn't want Maya moving on. And it sounds to me like she's going to be found pushed off a hiking trail with her phone in her hand or something like that. So, you know, I just see such differences between someone like Larry and someone like Barry. Um, but it's not to say one isn't innocent and one isn't guilty. What would I know? That's why I go and listen to wise, trained, educated, experienced people like John Kelly, profiler, okay? And um, he doesn't just talk for the sake of it, like I do, um, kind of. He talks for a very good reason. So I think this was number 33 in a series on the Delphi murders. And really urge you to go and listen to him and subscribe if you haven't already. He's also got, there's a secondary channel. I can't remember what it's called, but it's to do with healing addiction. And with alcohol mainly I guess, but maybe AOD, and he's just so intelligent and compassionate, and if you have any issues, or family members, or friends, um, maybe go and listen to his videos that he makes there as well, so his channel's probably linked under the details on his John Kelly Profiler channel, but anyway, so True Crime Jesus is the channel that plays Leah Kerr's um, commentary, um, expose on the Delphi murders. So there's a very interesting tidbit of information right at the end of his video. But it's probably elsewhere as well. But I, I just thought I'd make this what I thought would be a quick video. It's turned into nearly 18 minutes. Um... I thought I'd make this quick video just for people that don't know about John Kelly or um, aren't up to date on what's happening with Delphi. Um, because it, it, it's a case that I think I first started watching Grey Hughes maybe three or four years ago. And that's obviously how I got introduced to... Um, a lot of American cases. I hadn't been watching a lot of American true crime before then, and since then I've been absolutely hooked. Um, I haven't watched Duty Ron for a while, but I saw that he had Tori Hartman on to break down, um, do some statement analysis. She's a very insightful person. And if you didn't watch Tori Hartman throughout all the height of the Watts, the true Watts height, the peak, and by that I mean when information was actually coming out. So when we were getting the five-hour recording um, of the second sort of the prison interview of Christopher walking shit stain watts um i was watching tori hartman so was it two years ago or so but go and catch up on some of her videos and insights because just as a you know she she does some woo woo things that people won't like but um as far as being a woman that has interesting personal background has forged her own way in life and has just a really deep understanding of the human psyche really I think from a very interesting perspective she does do you know astrology charts and things like that but you know she doesn't and it just might be worth you checking out if you haven't seen her already um she hasn't been online for a while tori um 
I think I can say this because she's talked about it herself. So she went through an extremely big learning curve of a year about herself through some mental health problems, through some diagnoses she got, and then through some recurring mental health situations she, she went through. So Tori, you know, um, got a diagnosis of ADHD and went through some finding some treatment or some help with stabilizing that and and that's an interesting topic and she it explained a lot about her and her life um, she's an author she talks about her struggle with depression and you know so throughout last year she went offline but she's she's still around she's popped up on duty ron so if you watch duty ron um, I'm just going to go and watch that video. I can't remember the case that she's talking about, but she's giving a statement analysis. It might even be on Larry Maletti because I think Duty Ron's been covering that case lately. I, ha I haven't been watching him in the last few months, but um, it's super interesting because I, th I personally see a difference in and it might just be, okay, well, Barry Morphew is an intelligent person and Larry Malati is not. I don't know. Is that why people are keeping mum and why they don't? I mean, I think Barry has just got a heightened, it's fight, flight or freeze. And, you know, I think Barry is very aware of the danger that he's in from, and he says this all the time, from members of the public who film him or from people who want to twist his words or are waiting to catch him up on something that is just not um, maybe anything to do with guilt, but that could certainly look that way if it's misconstrued. And he knows how quickly, I talk about this all the time and it's that, you know, so does, so do many people, you know, it's the 80, around the world in 80 seconds of a lie. Once that happens, that's it, okay, that's it, because the truth isn't going to make it, and, and no one's going to say sorry, they're just going to move on, and go, oh, oh well, can't help it, you know, and then just gone on to the next thing, you know, you, it is the true crime arena, this is what I've been calling it, I took the community out of it a year ago, no, I didn't. I took the... Yes, I did. Maybe. Took the community out of the true crime community. And then recently I've added Arena. And it really is. And look at what's happening with... Um, well, you know. Surrounding the, the Orin and Orson West missing persons case. Look at that batshit crazy drama um uh, there's such aggression there's such arrogance and there's such agenda on display with the videos that many people are making and it's not right and i don't know if it's in direct reaction to this but then you get people that are coming out so strongly in opposition to it that it, I feel it's going beyond a devil's advocate or impartiality merely. Um, but that's just my opinion. I mean, we don't know what has happened to the West boys. We don't know if they've gone missing from their most, the West's most recent home in Cal City, we don't know if the boys haven't been seen since before May last year. Um, we haven't got confirmed sighting. And Trezell and Jacqueline West have not released recent photos. And I find that disturbing. You might say, they don't need to answer to us. They don't need to come out with proof that these children were in. I would say, do you know what? They should be dispelling rumours and putting an end to what has become a bloody dangerous nightmare. And what do I mean by that? Where are the photos of little Lauren and little Lawson West sitting inside that Cal City home or outside in the yard of the Cal City home 
since September 2020. That's all they need to do. I bet your bottom dollar that they can't do it. I bet you. I bet you they will never come out with those photos. Yeah, maybe this is because they just aren't really the loving parents that would take a photo. I mean, they should have been able to walk inside that home, take a photograph off the mantle and say, here's us when we moved into this new home. We're very happy to be proud homeowners. Finally, it's been a dream of ours and this allows us to give stability to the six children under this roof. I'm, it's just my opinion again, but I think that the police officers that went inside that Cal City home found that it wasn't a loving home environment. And although there may have been clothes and toys that might have belonged or been used by Orson and Orrin West, I don't think they saw evidence that those boys were ever even there. So, yes, it's true. Trizelle and Jacqueline West owe us nothing. But they must be able to see what a shitstorm has been brewing. I mean, obviously, they, they know. They must know how dangerous it is. I mean, I am 100% against vigilantism. It's not that I'm against crowdsourced information as such. Uh, but I'm against harassing your fellow man. And I'm against vigilantism because this isn't... Um, 1820 it's 2021 so I do think though the, the Wests have sort of a little bit of responsibility they should for the sake of moving forward with the investigation in the right direction they should be saying look here is me Oren Orson sitting on this floor so you can see this isn't photoshop this is a real photo and this is us sitting in our cow city home where the fuck are these photos they don't exist it's just my opinion they don't exist and that's why we don't have them uh it's true that she's got her phone back so why hasn't she released photos she would have them on her phone how many photos have we got i have a dog i could show you a photo um from you know Everyone could show you recent photos on their phone of family members that share their home, couldn't they? So Jackie and Trezell West should have photos from December, from October, from September 2020 of those, those little boys in Cal City with them, right? So just release them and shut the, the madding crowd up. But they can't because they would have. They'd say, look. We're nipping this in the bud. We need these boys found. We are desperate to find out what happened. I think they were taken from here. And here we are with those boys in this home. Okay, because the situation is another... We've got another powder keg. But I don't believe they can do it. I just, I just don't. And yes, I know. I know the lovely Catherine of Left Undone has has put out a video that someone gave her of the home at Cal City where it looks like there's this two shadow movement going out the gate, right? But this is a copy of a copy of a copy. We don't know how video works in that regard. Like, can shadows split? And how, what, how does data get interpreted when it's a copy of a copy and it's being run through a program and that sort of thing so i i mean i don't know about that okay but it might show the two little boys going out the gate great i i feel that the onus is on the wests they're the ones with the missing children they're the last people to see these children they need to show proof that they were there in cal city to quell all the dangerous stuff that's happening now okay um and they need to do it and they should have done this a long time ago this is months now this is months this has gone on we're in march the little boys three years and four years old went missing in december last year people are saying this confirmed sighting of a young child now this neighbor would have no idea if this young if this is another black child little boy um 
even if they're five years old. Because I, I understand it, as I understand it, the West's, one of the children that was also in their care, maybe a biological or a foster child, at the time they moved to Cal City, was a young child around the age of Orrin and Orson. See, people think that, oh, well, they can't have children at that age, but they could have had two, three-year-olds because if one's a foster child or a biological child, they could have had two, three-year-olds in that home, even two, three-year-olds and two, four-year-olds. Um, so we don't know who this young child was that was seen. It was only one. It wasn't the two, and it's not identifiable as Orrin or Orson. It could have been another child altogether. That was seen. It was just one child at the time. It's not proof. And we know what the statistics say. The statistics say that the people who these children were most likely to be in danger of is Jacqueline and Trezell. I mean, that's just a fact. It's not to say that I mean, I don't know either way. I really don't. I don't on any case that I talk about, even though I give my opinion, because this is my video channel channel where I give my opinion, you know, because I think people like to hear an opinion. Um, working in sales through many different industries, that's just something that I know. People like you to give an opinion. They don't want... Uh, 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 all of this, you know, ho hoitering and toitering. Um, they just want to hear an opinion. You don't have to agree with that. <sighs> yeah. Melissa Caddick case is another very interesting one, isn't it? Because <sighs> it's being talked about as the foot being a severed foot, but it could, it's disarticulated. That's all we know. It's disarticulated. We don't know if it's been surgically severed, but I've questioned. She didn't pick up $100,000 worth of Canturi or Centuri. I do know it. I can't remember what it is, but they're, they're an exclusive jewelry company. They design and, and manufacture um, incredibly upmarket jewelry. She paid them $100,000 for something that she didn't pick up. I mean, that, in my mind, would pay for a surgical procedure. Um, whether she would go this far or not. I mean, to me, all this does is mean that now she's identifiable as a person with only one foot, <laughs> to be honest. It just means that she's instantly more easily recognizable anywhere she is on the planet um, if she wanted to go for a swim if she wanted to walk in shorts she's instantly recognizable as the person with one foot so would you throw a foot into the ocean as proof i don't know would you throw a personal item in maybe a necklace tangled with hair a, a watch with blood on it, a ripped off fingernail with blood on it, maybe put that somewhere to be found on the cliff top or, you know, would you have just lined items up on the cliff top? Uh, does she, does she realize that there's no proof and that they need a body part? I, I don't know. I, if she didn't, I don't know if she'd commit Suicide, I'm not sure, but narcissists do. People think narcissists won't commit suicide and they absolutely are at high risk. But I I think she was murdered. If I had to if I had to make a choice, I think she was murdered. The, the son must be just in such deep shock. He'll be having nightmares. He will be having nightmares feel deeply sorry for him. I, I hope this murder is solved or this crime is solved. I hope there is some closure because I, I can't imagine the hell on earth for this teenage boy. You know, think of Mallory and Macy. You know, first you're accusing, people are accusing Morgan Gentiles' lover. Now she's the hero bringing Barry Morphew down. But, you know, and, and then at first Mallory and Macy are just completely, oh, these poor girls. And then they are 
complicit in the murder of their own mother. I mean, think of the nightmare people ha and it's such a time in life. I know people who've lost parents in certain ways at these delicate times in life and you never recover. You know. Yeah, anyway. Uh, that was going to be a five-minute chat, and it's turned into 35. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for being here with me, and I'll chat to you later. Yes, I am still going to make a video on confirmation bias. I just, <laughs> I'm not sure how to go about it. Um, it was an idea that I had and something that I wanted to see through. Uh, so I'm still going to try and make that video. I don't know when it will be though. Um, take care and I will speak to you anon. Bye.